Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel and I'm a huge Eurovision fan as well as a musician. And of course, you can tell by today's title that I'm going to be giving you my predictions for semi-final one. So these are not my personal qualifiers. These are my predictions based on what we know so far about the running order, what we know about the capabilities of the live performances that we've seen at the pre-parties and then thinking also about the songs in general. If you want to see my personal qualifiers please look in the description box, I'll write those all up for you guys. But these predictions are going to be just predictions, free from bias, I'm not going to kind of think about what I like, I'm going to think about what I think juries and public will like, blend it together and base it on kind of historical performance we've seen at Eurovision for some of these countries so please let me know down below firstly what you think is going to qualify from this semi-final I'm interested to see what you guys think and let me know if you agree with me or disagree with me with my predictions and of course these aren't the locked in predictions the day before the semi-final I'll be back to show you what my final predictions are based on looking at the rehearsal footage so let's get straight into this I'm going to be reviewing this using the running order as a guide and letting you know if I think that song's going to qualify or if it's not or if it might or might not that kind of thing so let's start with Albania they are opening the show which is fantastic I think that's a perfect choice for them to open the show because it just brings some energy to the stage and I think this will qualify and these are the reasons why firstly we know Ronella is a great live performer we saw it at Festival of Kengesh back in December the vocals were perfect they have an interesting staging concept at that festival but also in the music video that can be brought to the stage too maybe that interesting hair piece with all the plaits and stuff I thought that was you know a really cool and quirky part of the music video there's the dancing capabilities you've got there they can take that from the music video or take it from festival at Kengesh as well so that will appeal to the juries because I think this kind of song has so much nice flavor about it it's got a really nice break in the instrumental but also I think the quirkiness and the language and the blend of it all will appeal to the public so I think this is going through Albania in the final once again and then in the spot of death in this running order is Latvia City Jenny with Eat Your Salad so most people would have thought immediately that this won't qualify because it's in the spot of death but to be honest this is a song I think can qualify from any position in this running order no matter who it's sandwiched in between I think this can definitely go through and these are the reasons why firstly they have made such an impact at the pre-parties we've seen them gather such a good fan base really appeal to the general public and I think for instance in the UK they're going to love this track because it's so fun and quirky and it's got really <laughs> hilarious lyrics but also there's a talent side of it too. So they're really, really great instrumentalists, vocalists, composers in this group. And I think the juries will spot that as well, because for me as a, mu as a musician, I spotted immediately the chords were amazing. The melodies, the way it flowed and transitioned all sounded really great. So I think that should be a, a USP for this group. And I think it will go through, maybe not confidently, but I think it will go through. Next in the running order, Lithuania. This is Monica Liu with Sentimentai. So this one, I've put a question mark under it because I just don't know whether it being so early on in the running order, it's, is it going to be forgotten? I think this is a quality track. And in terms of its kind of lushness and sophisticated vibe that you get from it, that should appeal to the juries because yes, it's in a different language, but I think you don't have to understand the language to appreciate the quality of it. And I think that will kind of come through and impress people. In terms of the public, I don't know what they're gonna think because this has got a lot of fans from the Eurofan circle, but I'm not sure the general public are gonna kind of gravitate towards this. It's quite tricky to call. So I've put a question mark under this for now because I think by the time we see the rehearsals, we might be able to have a better indication. So for now, question mark, but it could change. Next in the running order, I've got Switzerland at number four, Marius Bear with Boys Do Cry. So this one was really tricky for me to kind of put down, like where's this gonna go? Because I think there's something really good about this song in terms of its 
instrumental. I've gone on about this before many times, but this song I think is quite high quality in the way it's been written and the sounds they're using, the instruments, the variety, that kind of thing, but it lacks in this kind of memorability. It, it lacks in a, in a way that the audience can sing this back and I think that's what's going to tank it with the public because they might sit there and be like, oh, this is really sweet. But then if you've got 10 songs that are going to go through, is this one going to be on top? I, I don't know. I think juries might appreciate this one because of the message firstly I think they like a good soppy message but also they really will like the whole kind of aesthetic of it the way it sounds and the way that his voice fits in the track public's not going to like this though so I don't know if it's going to be enough jury points to really push this into that 10th or 9th spot in the qualifiers so I have put this as a question mark as well it is hard to call if they bring something really interesting in the staging and if this stands out, if this is a kind of wow moment, like maybe Salvador Sobral, I think this could be really high with the juries and then push it up to, to qualifying. So let's wait and see what they do with the staging with this one. Fifth in the running order is Slovenia and also my number five of the year. This is LPS, Last Pizza Slice, with a slice of quality that is disco. Like I said in my review, this is probably the best written track of the year because of just how talented they are, the chords, the way it sounds. It's incredible. I gush over this entry, to be honest. But will everyone else gush over this? I don't know. This again, question mark for me, because I just think, oh, when I listen to it and I've showed it to like my pals who are music grads and they just, their jaw dropped at some of the core progressions. They were astounded by it. So hopefully there'll be some people in the juries that might pick up on those elements because I, I wouldn't personally call myself like a musical expert or someone that's kind of been in the industry for decades but I am quite competent I have a music degree and I have quite a, um, a rich background in classical music so I think juries who are maybe a bit older or a bit more experienced might really like this it harkens back to that 70s disco sound that kind of chic Niall Rogers vibe about it. I think people in the juries might give this points, but the public is hard to call as well. I don't think this is like a definite non-qualifier because it might charm the hell out of the public and they could vote for this in quite big numbers. I know the language might be a bit of a barrier for people. It's in Slovene, but I think the melody is strong enough to kind of make people like this and it is very quirky and charming so I don't think this should be written off but I can't put it as a qualifier so for now it's a question mark but for sure it might surprise and if this qualifies I will eat my shoes I'll be so happy <laughs> next in the running order at sixth place is Ukraine Kalash Orchestra with Stefania definite qualifier they're going to keep their 100% qualification streak no doubt about it I think this is quality it's really ethnic it's got a nice flute melody it's very catchy and very well written and I think public in terms of kind of maybe sympathy votes I don't like saying that but I've, I'm just trying to be realistic here maybe sympathy votes might pour in but also just general people might like this because of the way it sounds the way it will stand out so well in this running order as well. The running order is great for the song because it's sandwiched between two songs which might not have as much impact. So public will go big for this. Juries on the other hand, I'm thinking, okay, juries might mark them down for maybe the vocals being flat in places because in the national final, he was missing that D note. He was just a little bit flat off it. But then in the pre-parties, he was hitting that note a lot better. I think the lead vocalist has improved slightly with that. So that's my main concern. Will the juries not points off this because of the vocal performance and because it's rap as well? I don't know, juries don't really like rap at the contest. We saw what happened with Flo Rida last year. I don't think this one's in trouble at all but I don't think it will be up there with the juries per se. It's gonna sail through though. It's going through to the final. And then seventh in the running order, Bulgaria, intelligent music project with intention. And this for me, dead, not qualifying. Sorry guys, this, not, this is not qualifying. I think there's a case for all of these songs that can be made for all of these songs to qualify. It's a strong semi-final. But when you put it all together, all 17 songs, this one goes flat at the bottom. It really tanks because it's just, it's a rock song with so many talented musicians in this, in this super group. 
that it has no impact, no conviction. And there's no way people are going to kind of come in massive herds to vote for this. I have, I just don't, I can't see it happening. Maybe some other people might like this. Maybe the older generation might go for this kind of thing because it's kind of dad rock and the guitar solo shreds. It's really good. I just don't think it's enough for the juries to like it either. It's one of those songs where I just don't see this getting loads of points in either half of the votes. So for me, this is a non-qualifier and the only way this can go through is if there's a huge kind of fan response to this in the public side of the votes. But that's all I can say about this so far. Let me know what you think about that one as well. Eighth in the running order, Steen with the Dipte from the Netherlands. For me, this is going straight through to the final for two reasons. Primarily, the voice. The, the juries will love the voice. I think her voice is so unique and it's got so much passion. It will stand out amongst all the competitors. There's no doubt about that. And the second reason is because I think she's got a really interesting image as well. She stands out physically from the competitors. And I think the public will remember the blonde lady with, with the waist long hair from the Netherlands singing this captivating song. I think this will hit quite high in both halves of the vote, but I'm not sure which half is going to be higher. It's whether, for instance, the juries will give this maybe five points or 12. That's the difference. I, I can't see how this one's going to turn out because it's really beautifully written. It's a good song. It lacks a bit of impact for me personally. I don't know if other people will feel that way too and gravitate towards more impactful songs like Greece or maybe something like Denmark. I don't know. But this one is going through to the final and I don't think that's going to change from now on. Ninth in the running order, Moldova. Dom Sidib and Frati Advohov with Trenichel or Train, Little Train. Great entry. This one is foot tapping, it's jovial, it's catchy. And I think this is a borderline qualifier for me. This will hopefully go through if they nail the staging. We know Moldova is great at staging. They can resurrect a piece which the public kind of thought is dead and buried by the time it's released because of some fantastic staging. We saw it in 2018 and we saw it last year as well. It went through. So I think this will scrape through to the final because of the public vote. I don't think the juries will like this at all. They might think it's repetitive. They might not think it goes anywhere. It might not develop. They might find it a little bit irritating, maybe. I don't know. I think this is a kind of thing that the public will really enjoy because it's just so quirky and unique. And I think we've seen them in the final twice before this group. So there's no way that they can't do it for the third time. So I think this will go through, but it's more of a kind of a maybe for me. But I will put this through as a borderline qualifier. And then 10th in the running order, Portugal. So this one's really interesting. Maru with Saudade Saudade. I think this one is a sure qualifier. I know some people are kind of hesitant about putting this one through because it's a ballad or because it's slow. But I think this is so understated and beautiful that both halves of the vote will go quite big for this one. I think the staging of it, that kind of campfire vibe they've got with the backing singers all sitting in a circle together with Marrow, I think that will really kind of strike a chord with the public. Surely, surely that will people will like that because it's interesting and it's very unique. It's not going to kind of blend in with the rest of the tracks. It feels very intimate and I think the public will feel like they're being invited in on something that other entries haven't provided or haven't extended an invite to. So I think that's something to really watch out for too. Juries will love this as well because of those lovely harmonies in there. It's a really well written five part harmony with the backing vocalists that really fits in with this minimalistic backing track. And I hope to God that this gets a lot of love because it is one of my favourite tracks this year and I think it deserves points and I'd be really sad if this doesn't go through but I do think it has a shot at going through because of how beautiful it is. We've seen them do it before Portugal in 2017 so why can't they do it again? That's all I have to say. And then 11th in the running order, Croatia, Mia Dimsic with Guilty Pleasure. This one for me, unfortunately, is not going to go through. I just don't see a contest where this impacts enough to go through. It's very meek. I'm not saying it's bad. I think it's quite a charming and sweet song. It's got a good hook. But I just don't think it does enough to really, really sell itself for votes. I just don't see a juror ranking this in the top 10. 
with all of these other entries because it really is just quite there and it doesn't kind of invite you to vote for it. It doesn't feel like it has enough power and I feel like it's kind of on both halves of the vote. This won't be impactful enough to score enough points. So I don't see this going through, but I have seen at the pre-parties that her performances have stood out from the rest of them in terms of vocal quality and her ability to deliver a really good live performance. And I think she's really talented, so I could be proved wrong. And that would be nice to see Croatia back in the final. But I just think from this kind of time right now, I don't see this going through. But maybe my mind will be changed later. We'll see. 12th in the running order is Denmark, ready with the show. Again, this one for me, I don't see it going through. I know it's quite foot tapping and interesting, but to me it's a little bit frantic and I don't know whether a musical expert will see this as a quality rock song. They might actually look at something like Bulgaria and appreciate the chord progressions of Bulgaria and kind of shredding of that guitar a little bit more than in Ready, because in Ready's song it's very fast and very frantic but it doesn't have enough musical variation or theme or sense of kind of experimentation that Bulgaria has and I know that sounds ridiculous coming from me because I put ready above intelligent music project in my rankings but I'm just thinking objectively you've got two rock songs in the semi-final which one's going to come out on top and I, do I don't see Denmark really pushing for that qualification in this case I think the drummer is the strongest member of the group and she's just drumming because she's really powerful and she has good timing and rhythm and I think it's really evident there and maybe they'll get points for that but I think that key change at the end might put jurors off they might see it as dated they might see it as that they ran out of ideas the public might like that kind of gimmick of starting off a song slow and then going fast halfway through but if that's the only thing that makes this song unique and special there's 16 other songs in this final where there's an argument to be made that there's something a bit more unique about everything else. So unfortunately, I don't think this is going through, but we'll see. We'll see. Number 13 is Austria. This is Lumix featuring Pia Maria with Halo. So before the pre-parties, I had this as a sure qualifier. After the pre-parties, I have this as a maybe. I've got it as a borderline qualifier, so for now I think it's going through, but not comfortably. And that's precisely because of the live vocal performance. In my original review, I picked up on that the vocal was a bit processed. And I said, I don't think it's a case of Pia Maria can't sing. I just think this is a really tricky song to get right live. And I think I was right, because when I heard the live performance from Israel Calling, it just sounded like she was struggling to get her breath control and it really didn't sound like a good live song. There's some some instances at Eurovision where the studio cut of a song, and I, had, I think this is the same with France as well and with Romania last year, where the studio cut is just superior and it's just really hard to get a good live performance of it because it's so intricate and it's got these interesting effects and edits in there. And that's the problem with Austria. In the vocal, you can hear, she says, let me be a halo. And then halo is echoed above that in this backing vocal. She physically can't sing both of those lines. It's a really tricky thing to pull off. I think this still could go through because of the way that it's been written, the catchiness, I think it's just a, a strong song, but I think if they pull that vocal up to a good standard, it will go through. But for now, it's a borderline for me. This is one to watch out for in the rehearsals for, for definite. 14th in the running order is Iceland. This is Sister with Met Hakandi Sol. And I personally think right from the get go, I don't think this is going through, which breaks my heart because I think it's a really, really quality piece of music. It's sultry, it's subtle. It's got a really interesting way it's been written. I've described this kind of as renaissance music, a bit like a madrigal in the way that they play with some of the harmonies and the way that they resolve it in, at the end on the Picardy third. It's a really interesting written song, but it's not punchy. It's not impactful and it doesn't kind of evolve or go anywhere. And that's the problem. If their USP is just them standing on the stage singing, looking like sisters, literally, and just moving around like this with a guitar, I seriously don't know whether that's enough for them to stand out and to kind of get enough points in both halves. In terms of jury, I think the juries will like this because they're not kind of trying to show off. 
they're not trying to be in your face they're just showing that they're talented they're well rehearsed they're a good put together group and they write good music and i think juries will appreciate that public however i don't know if the public will see this and be like i'm voting for that it's hard to call i think a belgium last year it's got a similar vibe for me and i think there could be a parallel where this does qualify but just sort of slipping through because the juries really push for that to go through. So I'll be interested to see what happens. But for now, this is not a qualifier for me. 15th in the running order is Greece. Amanda Tenfield with Die Together, one of my favourite songs this year, is actually my runner up. So this one for me is definitely going through. And I think this will be one to watch for Greece. I think this could win for sure. But in terms of being more objective, because I've got to be objective here. I just think this one strikes a chord with so many people who've been in a similar situation to what she's singing about in the lyrics. It's a very immediate song that grabs you from the get-go with the vocoder opening, just the vocals. There's nowhere else to look, nothing else to think about. you just focusing straight on her voice. And I think the public will just sit up in their seats and be like, what is this? And then really pay attention because it's so subtle, it's unique, it's got something really special about it. And musically, this is where the juries come in. There's so much handed to you on the plate with this one. The chords, the way that they change it up in the last chorus to add some extended chords in there. I think that will be appreciated by musical experts because it stops the song being repetitive. It takes it off in the new direction and it adds a slightly nicer ambience to it too. Surely they should go for this one because it's so nice. Oh, I, I'm trying not to be biased here, but just looking at the running order, it's really close to the end. That's good for them. It will be in the forefront of people's minds. And it kind of like will bring the mood to a new area, I think, as well. So that could make them stand out more. So this one for me is definitely going through. Next. 16th in the running order is Norway, Give That Wolf a Banana by Subwoofer. <laughs> this is sailing through to the final. This could be the winner of the public vote and that's purely because of how funny it is. I see this up there with Latvia in the public vote and Ukraine. I really think people are going to love this one. It's really well put together. I think it's well rehearsed. It doesn't look messy at all. It doesn't look stupid. It's silly, but it's not stupid. And I think that's the key thing here where the public will like this because they'll be charmed by it as well as finding it funny. They're not going to be like, what the hell is this? This is, looks like a show. They're going to be like, this is funny. So yeah, th that's, that's where I am with this one. Musical experts, interesting one. People think the musical experts will tank this because of the costumes and the general vibe, but I think there's a few musical elements in this which stand out. The variation in the second verse, they bring in a bit of piano. There's a nice hook there. The vocals are actually really strong too. I think the guys under those costumes can sing and they know how to sing live as well. And jury should hopefully reward that because it's really, really difficult to dance and sing at the same time and do a good overall stage show. And I think they're actually pulling it off. So let's not say that this is going to be tanked by the juries. I don't think it's going to win the jury vote, but I think it will be a jury qualifier, to be honest. If people have a sense of humour in the juries, they should hopefully give this points. And then finally, closing the semi-final in 17th is Armenia, Rosalind with Snap. To me, this is a borderline one, but I think at this moment in time, it's going to go through as a borderline qualifier. So this is mainly because I think the juries will appreciate some of the musical inventions they've got going on there the theme and variation technique they use in the chorus so they take the chorus spin out the melody and then by the end it's just improv and it's sort of unraveled i absolutely love that aspect and i think musical experts should spot that too it's all live instrumentation too there's no kind of synths there's no computerized instruments it's all guitars kick drums clapping it's all very raw and very natural and i think that should hopefully get it points too in terms of a public vote, I think this could nail it if they bring in something really special like in the music video with maybe a house on stage that's flying, that could really get some votes. And also because it's closing the semi-final, hopefully that will help boost it in the public vote. It will be at the front of people's minds and that's really important. I know last year we saw with Denmark they didn't qualify even though they closed the show, but I think this won't be hurt by that kind of aspect of the running order. So Armenia is going through for me. 
So my predicted qualifiers for this semi-final are as follows. Albania, Latvia, Ukraine, Netherlands, Moldova, Portugal, Austria, Greece, Norway and Armenia. Those are my qualifiers. But let me know down below what you guys think. Who's going through from this semi-final? Thanks for watching my video. I hope I don't sound like I'm racing when I'm talking. Like I need to take extra breaths. Because somebody told me that in the comment last video. Breathe girl, breathe. So I will breathe. But I just try and fit all my thoughts into a really short video. I don't want to keep you guys too long. But anyway, I'll see you guys soon for my semi-final two predictions. And I hope you have a good rest of the week. Bye.